Good evening and welcome to Howard Perspectives. My guest this evening is Mr. Herb Kenny, who is the only living member of the original world-famous singing group known as the Ink Spots. Herb, welcome. Glad to have you with us this Thank evening. Thank you, Johnny, Dr. Well. Herb was born in Philadelphia, uh, but he grew up here in uh, the Baltimore area. Uh, joined the Ink Spots in 1944. Um, he joined the group when Orville Hoppy Jones died, and Herb then became uh, uh, the famous talking bass. From 1944 on, the only company the Ink Spots recorded for was uh, for Decca Records. About 20 years ago, uh, Herb and his wife moved here to Howard County. Uh, his daughter lives here in Columbia, and he and his wife, Minnie, uh, are close to the grandchildren now. And uh, She works uh, over for NSA, as I understand it. Mm -hmm. uh, Herb's sort of uh, in uh, semi-retirement. Uh, he still does some concerts, but uh, I guess your main occupation now is keeping your golf handicap uh, low, isn't it? Uh, That's my priority now. <laughs> 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 well, you started out to uh, join the Ink Spots when you were uh, very young. Did you always know you were going to be a singer? Was that, uh, from, the, from the time you started talking, was that something you... No, I didn't. Uh, I, <laughs> as a matter of fact, I wanted to be a radio announcer. Is that right? What I used to do you was later get did, material. Did you? Yes, yeah. I, I would get material and uh, I would read it and pretend I was on a mic or something like that. However, my brother Bill, he was the one who was quite oriented to, to singing. Uh, he would, well, listen to Morton Downey, for example, and uh, bake sweet potatoes in the oven when he comes home from school. Uh, but I, I didn't have any real inkling for singing as such. Later on, uh, I decided to go into it, but not because I really thought I'd make a vocation out of it. Bill was your older brother. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, and he was... Fair, he was significant in your life. Uh, he was. Uh, well, there were three of us. My father died when I was very young. And there was my mother, my brother, and myself. And uh, I admired Bill for, for just practically everything. He just um, he, he inspired me with his determination and things like that. Uh, I can tell you later about Bill things that... Uh, that really encouraged me. We'll, we'll, we'll talk more about that as we go along, but he really was instrumental in getting you into the group, was he not? Yeah. Yes, he was. Uh, How did that happen? Then? I had been singing in churches in Baltimore. Uh, uh, I was approached by a group of fellows in Baltimore who said, Herb, come and sing with us. And uh, I had no idea that I would start at that time. And I said, okay. And uh, they billed me as Herb Kenny, the baby brother to Bill Kenny. <laughs> oh, <is that> right? <laughs> yeah. And we sang in churches. We left Baltimore after about three months and went into Newark, New Jersey. We sang churches there, and then from there we went to New York. And there I found that this was what I wanted to do. I, I found that the audience was receptive to me and everything, and uh, I sang in churches for a while and then went into show business. When you sang in the churches, uh, did you sing for what you could get from the collection, or did That's they pay exactly you? That's exactly right. We, we were offered... Uh, I remember one church in New York in, uh, that uh, the pastor said that if you don't give us a good collection for Herb Kenny and his group, well, he'll go and join his brother. <laughs> but uh, well, sometimes a we get... threat there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> sometimes we get like $10 a piece or something like that. Sometimes we get $3 a piece, depending on the audience. But mostly the pastors, they got the most. They would have three different plates, you know. One for the pastor, one for the guest, and one for the quartet. Oh, is that right? <laughs> now it was last. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, how did it uh, happen then that you joined the Spots? Yeah. I uh, had been working with a, a group, and we went down into Kelly's Stable, a place on 52nd Street. I had told the group in church that I was singing within churches that if we didn't get a job within three weeks, I would leave and uh, go to California. We walked down to a place called Kelly's Stable. The owner was George Lynch and his wife. It was about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And we auditioned for them, and they gave us a job. Uh, at the time, we were in the big league because Billy Daniels was working there, mm. and Coleman Hawkins and uh, Billy Holiday would come in twice a week. And I worked there with them and decided that uh, I would form my own quartet after that, which was about uh, a month later. 
I had a job booked for the plantation in St. Louis, Missouri. I had the contract in my hand that we were supposed to go to perform, and I went to the Paramount Theater to tell my brother I was leaving. We were in the gymnasium, and uh, they were breaking in a fella to do the singing, the talking part, to, to replace Hoppy Jones. Mm -hmm. I went over to him and says, look, this is how you do it. <clears throat> Pardon me. And I showed him how to do the talking. We had a, they had a road manager, Bill did, named Mary Nadell. And Bill and Mary Nadell came over to me and said, you've got a job. I said, <laughs> I've like already that. got one, you know. He says, no, uh, you've got a job with us. And I thought about it. I says, well, I won't have to have the headache of uh, breaking into the business. This is the number one quartet. I had to give up singing to do the talking, mm -hmm. but I thought it was a good move. And uh, that's how I joined the... And when was that? Uh, that was in 1944. In 44. Mm -hmm. Yes. So prior to that, uh, they, when Hoppy died, they had stopped recording. And um, when I joined them, we resumed recording. And uh, I happened to be the last one of the DECA recording artists of the Ink Spots. Hmm. So uh, were there some other changes that took place in the quartet at that time then, some other moves that... Uh... Yes, in fact, um, when Hoppy died, uh, Bill wanted uh, to control the act. Mm -hmm. And Deke Watson was one of the original Ink Spots with Bill Kenny. That was uh, Deke, Charlie Fuquay, Hoppy Jones and uh, Bill. Now, when uh, Hoppy died, Bill bought Deke out for ten thousand oh, dollars. So he uh, bought the the rights. He to bought the, the rights of Deke to the name. Yeah, yeah which gave him three fourths of the act hmm. control. And uh, Deke was not supposed to use the name Inkspots. He relinquished the right when he accepted the money through a court procedure uh -huh. and everything. He went and ahead then and started another He started group. a group, yeah, called the Brown Dots. The Brown Dots, That's coincidence. Right. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> and uh, then in the interim, later on, he uh, found himself using the name Ink Spots. When the Brown Dots, he oh, left he did, the Brown he Dots. went back and used the name. The name then. Yes, and uh, he was not supposed to mm -hmm. have. Then Charlie Fuquay, he was one of the originals also. Uh, he was with the act during the time I was with him. And Billy Boyne replaced uh, Deke Watson as a rhythm singer. Mm -hmm. Charlie Fuquay, well, he um, stayed with the act until about 1949-50, I'd say 50. And he and Bill decided to go separate ways. So that the, the group that we think of as the Ink Spots, the original group, stayed together then for about six years? Yes, that's true. Uh, <laughs> And uh, Charlie, uh, they had a litigation about it, of course, and Charlie decided uh, that he wanted to go on his own, and he did. Uh, Charlie was supposed to have used the name The New Ink Spots. Hmm. This is what the, the, the ruling was. But later, of course, when they go to different parts of the country, figuring nobody know anything about it, they used The Ink Spots. The, the new sort of disappeared along the way. Exactly right. right. <laughs> and, and that's why we had uh, so many of these groups called Ink Spots coming into being because they were the personnel of the groups of Charlies and uh, maybe someone who worked with Deke who had mm -hmm. been original Ink Spots, mm -hmm. they decided to call themselves Ink Spots. Mm -hmm. We've got a, one of the early albums here um, and this this is the group that you were uh, this is talking the, about. The yes, uh, the Bill Kenny group, which mm -hmm. is, which was known as the Ink Spots. The Ink Spots. Uh, during court, they said that Bill would retain the name Ink Spots, but Charlie would use the name The New Ink Spots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this, this album was done when? Uh... About 1947. They uh, used to have a one of club there on 49th and Broadway called the Zanzibar. And uh, that was, uh, the picture was taken from that with Coleman mm -hmm. Hawkins there in the background. Mm -hmm. He was the band leader. And the Zanzibar was quite a place. Uh, they had, I remember, at the bottom of Zanzibar, on the first floor, was the turf, which sold seafood and things like that, you yeah. know. And then we'd be upstairs. Uh, I saw that place about four years ago. I was despondent because they made a big record store out of it. Oh, is that right? That you know. that's, and, uh, that's always depressing to see. Yeah, oh, it is. Yes, yeah. This is one of the double album packs, two records in it. Uh, mm -hmm. right. Now, these are available today, I guess. Yes, CD they are. As a matter of, of fact, the same album's available, um, and they have the CDs out now, too, uh, of the Ink Spots. Um, 
what were some of the of the uh, songs that really uh, characterized the ink spots that uh, you would point to and say this is really a, a song that that was yours as a group uh, what, what would come to your mind uh, you as uh, in regard to recording the yeah. numbers mm -hmm. that would be would fit mm -hmm. well uh, anything that had a sense of lyrical value that was uh, intimate pertaining to individual and the reason was because when we worked places like the theaters, the Capitol, or the Paramount, they would uh, have people come in to see us in wheelchairs. And uh, we sang to the young as well as the, the aged. So the songs that we sang were songs that were down to earth, that told the story, that were melodic. Hmm. In fact, there was a big sign at Decca, uh, the caption, it was an Indian, and uh, the caption was, where is the melody? And this is what we, we, we adhere to. As a matter of fact, Bing Crosby and the Ink Spots were considered the most imitated uh, artists in the business, and particularly Bill, because uh, a lot of artists uh, came up and uh, imitated Bill, such as I, I, uh, Johnny Mathis told me that he started out imitating Bill Kenny. I know that Elvis Presley started out imitating is Bill Kenny. And during that time, most of the people who <clears throat> pardon me, performed, they tried to utilize this particular method of, 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 of song uh, spelling or, or what have you. A um, couple of those would be, uh, if I didn't care, uh, yes. each his own, uh, Prisoner of Love, I think. Was Prisoner of Love, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That Gypsy. would characterize the, the style that you... That, that's correct. We, we would only insert, uh, if we had a, a show to do, and we had about five numbers, we would maybe do one rhythm song, and the mm -hmm. rest would be ballads. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you did this uh, talking bass part for a lot of your career, but you did do lead uh, occasionally, didn't you? Yes. Uh -huh. I had no idea when I joined the Ink Spots that I would have that privilege. But um, I recall in uh, 1946, we played a place called the, uh, in Connecticut, uh, a theater. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was asked, they asked me, they called me, I was in Philadelphia at the time, to come and take the Ink Spots to the State Theater in Hartford, Connecticut and uh, that I would be the one to sing instead of my brother. My brother would suffer sometimes from migraine headaches. Oh, really? And in fact, he would leave the stage right in the middle of the, hmm. uh, the show, and I would walk into his place. The first time it happened at the State Theater in Hartford, I remember Ella Fitzgerald was on the bill. Is that and, right? And uh, Mel Torme. Hmm. And uh, I uh, was asked to go and take Charlie and Billy Boyne, and I would do the lead singing and uh, also the talking. And I did. I, I was nervous. Oh, I was shaking in my boots. You know? uh, that was a real step. Yeah, huh? It was, because it was like filling a, a different uh, pair of shoes, you know. Yeah, plus uh, uh, filling in for somebody that you had so much respect for. Exactly right. And uh, I was awed at his, his, his presentation, mm -hmm. his, his painting a picture with, with the songs and mm -hmm. things. Uh, to me, he was the greatest thing in the business. And uh, Ella encouraged me. She knew I was nervous. She says, Herb, you used to sing lead in churches and your own mm -hmm. quartet. Go ahead and try it. I was quite pleased. Uh, the song then was popular was... Um, well, 